Hi friends, welcome back to the channel, and if you are new here, my name is Yvonne. You are on Ginger Chick Rehab, and I love to make over items. In today's video, I am taking some salvage finds that we picked at a hoarder's warehouse whoo, um, that need a lot of help to get them ready to resell. So I'm going to be sharing with you three different techniques to get that chippy aged effect paint job that is just dear to my heart. In well, my area, I'm not lucky enough to find a ton of salvaged pieces. So when I do, even if they're a little worse for wear, I'm going to pick them up and see what I can do for it. So these were picked from the hoarder's house, the hoarder's warehouse. So they do need a, a bit of work, especially since if you want to use them as decor, they don't stand up on their own. So first I just took the Japanese saw, got that little area that needed cut off, cut off. And now I'm going to start sanding so they will start to lay, so they will stand flat. Oh, and I'm sure there is other ways to cut them and get them a little bit flatter, but this is just the one that I am choosing to do at the moment in time. That way I can go gingerly. The other one actually has some wood rot that I need to deal with. So, I mean, they're salvaged finds, you know, they're not going to be perfect by any means, but you don't want them toppling over. And if you were wondering what I meant by wood rot, this is what I mean. It's just a falling right apart. So I'm actually taking the Japanese saw and getting the, oh, it's going to be a little bit shorter than the next guy, but that's okay. It's nice to have items that tear down. So anyway, yes, I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the excess. As you can see, it's just falling apart. And then I will be able to save some of that wood rot so it doesn't have to get so short by using some CA thin glue to harden that wood up and make it a solid surface. Okay, so the most I'm doing on the cleaning route of this is making sure that there are any big chunks, any spider webs, anything. I'm just taking a brush and cleaning it off. <laughs> There's not really a lot of, I can't soak this in water, I'll just wipe it off with a damn cloth to clean it. That is about it. So we are going to be testing out three different techniques of how to age. Even though these are already aged, they're already salvaged, a lot of times people won't buy them because they're a little too salvaged. <laughs> so they just can't envision them sitting on their shelves. So I need to make them chippy. So I am on this one, I'm going to be using the Vaseline technique. So the Vaseline is where you just put Vaseline where you don't want your paint to adhere. So just random places like along this beautiful crack, which isn't beautiful if it's on your house, but it's beautiful if it's on a piece of salvaged goods. So what the Vaseline is doing is when you go to paint it, it is going to prevent the paint from sticking to the wood. So you just have to decide which little areas you don't want your paint to stick to. So when you are doing a distress like this, a technique such as the Vaseline or the other two I'm going to show you, it's a one coat coverage. So you want to either paint them really heavily with a lot of paint on your paintbrush or if you're lucky enough to have a sprayer, go ahead and spray them like I am doing here. And I'm just using my Kills Paint and Primer paint in my True Coat 360s handheld sprayer. And then after they're dry, all I do is take a wet cloth and start wiping them down. So where I put that Vaseline, it, it will just, the paint will chip right off because the Vaseline prevented it from sticking to the wood. And then I like to go ahead and seal this chippiness in with some polycrylic just in case any more will, you know, is going to chip off that I missed trying to wipe it off and dry it off. This will seal it all in. Now 
Now, even though I got these at the hoarder's warehouse, um, they are actually not salvaged. They are Hobby Lobby clearance, <laughs> but they are still beautiful corbels that people just absolutely love corbels. So uh, not quite the same work as what I had to do on the previous two, but I still have to remove some stickers and get these cleaned. I'm choosing this technique with the candle wax because it has all this sharp corners, all the sharp detail on this corbel. So that's what I'm doing. This is just a, I have a box of votives that I picked up thrifted for minimal amount. So that's why my piece is so small. It's just a votive, <laughs> but any little wax will do. So yes, that's all I'm doing is taking the wax over all the sharp corners of this beautiful corbel. Now that this paint is dry, and I usually let these sit overnight to make sure since it's a heavy coverage of paint. Now, so now all I'm doing is taking a spackling tool and just scraping off where I put that wax and see how it just pops, pops all those details right out. It just all depends on what look you're going for and what the piece is going to allow you to do. I wouldn't have had the same effect um, with the Vaseline maybe on this and maybe I didn't want it to be as crackly as what um, a glue would do. It just all depends on what look you're going for. What do you think these three pieces came off from? I'm thinking probably some type of a porch. I'm thinking. <laughs> and yes, they need a little bit of help. <laughs> so this is what I mean. Just because they're salvage finds and you try to resell them, not everybody wants to spend the time fixing them to make them into decor. So that's that's my job. I'll, I'll make them over and I will make them pretty so that you can use them in your decor. So yes, this was three pieces of wood created to make one beautiful piece. So yep, my brad nails weren't quite long enough to get it to be, um, yeah, together. So I'm gonna need to glue and clamp these pieces together. But just like the previous pieces <laughs> in my first round, I need to make the areas flat. So Japanese saw has come in very handy. You know, if you don't have a lot of power tools or if you're like me, you're a little power tool shy of cutting, cutting items, the Japanese saw is nice and sharp and it does the job. There's just something about a staggered set though. You know, do you sell them as a set? Am I gonna keep them? Cause I'm really eyeballing them. Um, but yeah, I would like to make one of these a little bit shorter now. Um, yeah, Chris is home from work and he is the one that will, yep, he will use the cutting tools more than me. And I wasn't quite sure if there was gonna be any metal in these or anything like that. And I didn't wanna ruin one of the saw blades. So yeah, that's my, my excuse for not, use, for not using a cutting tool like the bandsaw that he's using. Now the fix for where the wood has cut off and you can see that fresh wood underneath, I just have some of my watered down Waverly Wax mixture that I 
it's a little bit of Waverly Wax, and then I put a little bit of the Waverly Ink Chalk Paint in it, and it really gives it that aged patina. And I'm sure some of you are looking going, oh, I think those should have stayed the way they are. As a reseller, I tell you, no, <laughs> nope, they will just keep getting bypassed in my retail booth. So, chippy paint it is. My last technique, and uh, it this has been my tech technique for a while and my go-to for aging an item is the school glue. Yes, just regular old school glue. This is just Amazon school glue in a gallon. You can use dollar store. You can use Elmer's glue. It does not really matter. Wait time, I put it on and then I paint right over it. I don't wait at all. find the quicker you apply the paint, if you can, you get a lot of different crackles, big crackles, little crackles, multiple crackles. You get where it starts to drip and that's okay. You leave it alone. And then sometimes you can leave it as is. And then I like to help it along with a sander. With it being glued on, it is good and on there. I don't have to worry. So to take it one step further, some 220 grit and all those sharp edges just to really give it that aged look. Then if you notice, nothing is chipping off. It's glued on. That paint is glued on, so I don't feel the need to put any polycrylic to seal everything in. My goodness, I just absolutely love salvage finds and coming across them as not an easy task <laughs> and then giving them that little help to make them a little bit more desire with that white chippy paint. So the fun is, is creating texture, creating the chippiness, giving it that old look. There's so many different ways to do it and the items kind of tell you sometimes what would work best. So... Give me the comment down below, which the Vaseline, the wax, the school glue, um, which techniques have you tried? Have you achieved? Which one of the three are your favorites? And I will have to say that probably the school glue <laughs> is my favorite, but not always does the item call for me to have that type of a crackle effect. So it's nice to have other options to do. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's content. So as always, if you are part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you were new and you were checking out our content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!